Friends, I am Dr. Hamdekar. In this video, I am going to recap all important messages that my colleagues gave during the last six videos. All these discussions were largely with very simple, regularly followed physical findings which we often either don't take a note of it or even if we take a note of it, we don't interpret. And that's why it is very important. Dr. Mahesh Mohite first talked about the pulse rate and he said that in children, the first response is a tachycardia, but in adults, the first response is increased stroke volume and only when that is not sufficient, you get tachycardia. Therefore, friends, especially in children and in all age groups, pulse rate is very, very important to note and to an experienced hand, just putting a finger on the radial pulse, you can find out whether it's within normal limits and if it is not, then you better count at least for 30 seconds, but without the counting, you may not know it. That's an important of the pulse. Also make a habit that you palpate pulses in both the limbs, posterior tibial and the radial, and if possible, on all sides, so that if there is any difference, you don't miss it at all. Besides the rate, you can also judge the pulse volume, and pulse volume represents the stroke volume of the heart. Therefore, it's very important. Of course, today, you don't have to have a great experience to pick up a volume uh, because uh, the blood pressure and the pulse pressure uh, easily uh, depicts the same. But what that is the important of a pulse rate, that it's not only the tachycardia, but it's also. And the apex pulse deficit is a measure of some arrhythmias. And don't forget to do that. This is something that we must make a habit of doing it in every patient. And you will definitely not miss something which is not common, but certainly worth noting. And I think that is important of the pulse. Thereafter, in the next video, Dr. Rajesh Chokani talked about how breathing can be assessed only by vision or hearing and then finally by touch. Even before auscultation, you can almost find out many abnormalities. You of course can see tachypnea, but if there is a tachypnea, you also see whether there is a respiratory distress by having chest retraction or accessory muscles working. And more important, you also observe whether the rapid respiratory rate is shallow, which indicates either you have an emphysema like in a bronchiolitis, or you may have a neuromuscular abnormality and the paresis of a respiratory muscles or even more important, there could be a respiratory muscle fatigue. On the other hand, it could be a deep and rapid which certainly suggests a metabolic acidosis and not a respiratory problem. I think this is very important and then add to that the sound that is produced. For example, you have a strider, you have a wheeze, you have a grunt and then a sound animated by a process of coughing. Even that is important because if you hear the cough, you are able to pick up anatomy of the disease like a pharynx, larynx or lower down in the airways or even the lung. That is the power of observation, vision and hearing. And once you know that, you can further extend by touching the patient, which you can easily see which part of the lung is involved by the decreased movements on that side. Of course, you can even look at TVF, the tactile vocal frameters, and then use uh, your touch for percussion. Simple thing that we must do is a habit so that we won't miss anything. In the next video, Dr. Mahesh Moite came back again and discussed about the interpretation of blood pressure. First thing he made a strong plea that each one of us must make a habit of noting blood pressure once a year of every patient that who comes to us. This is important because an adult essential hypertension, the primary hypertension, the seeds are sown right during childhood. And if you see and trace the centile changes occurring in the blood pressure reading that you started with 25th centile, 
then you moved on to 50 years, then you are moving out to 75th centile. Only when it crosses 95th centile that you label it as hypertension, but much before that you have already sensed that this is going to be a hypertension of an adult and you can start taking preventive measures by making suitable changes in lifestyle. It is so important then about the blood pressure. Then he says that systolic blood pressure indicates a myocardial contractibility, the diastolic blood pressure talks about a vascular resistance and the pulse pressure depicts the stroke volume. Friends, therefore, it is not only looking at 120 by 80 in an adult, but look at also the pulse pressure. Each one of that gives you important. And one more thing he discussed about was the mean arterial pressure. Mean arterial pressure can be easily devised by systolic and diastolic pressure. Systolic pressure plus twice the diastolic pressure divided by 3 is the mean arterial pressure. In adults it's about 90. And mean arterial pressure is an indicator of a tissue perfusion. How important is every part of blood pressure? Then of course he talked about a narrow pulse pressure in shock and a wide pulse pressure even in hypertension or maybe a bounding pulse of a patent ductus arteriosus or a severe anemia or a mitral regurgitation. And he also discussed about various causes of hypertension like a renal disease, a cardiovascular disease and also the endocrine disease like an adrenal hyperplasia. Having discussed these important things about blood pressure, then in the next video Dr. Tushar Manier talked about neck veins. Friends, neck veins are often ignored by all of us. Make a habit of looking at the neck veins by keeping the patient at about 45 degrees and looking at the pulsations of the internal jugular vein. And early sign of an increased jugular venous pressure as measured by a vertical distance from the top level of a internal jugular pulsation and the sternum below. And if it's more than 8 centimeters of water, you know that the jugular venous pressure in an adult is increasing and the cause could be a right atrial problem or sometimes it could be due to obstruction to the flow. And it could be an acute obstruction which is easy to make out because these are emergency situations like tension pneumothorax, pulmonary embolism. But what is more important that we should never miss is a constrictive pericarditis. Often caused by tuberculosis, there are vague symptoms of TB like a loss of appetite, loss of weight, but there are no symptoms of pericarditis at all. And the patient presents with a large liver, which is congestive liver, and our focus is on hepatomegaly and a liver disease. If you were to note the neck veins and then also look at the hepatojugular reflux, you will know whether there is an obstruction to the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava and you will not miss such thing. I think looking at the neck vein is a good maneuver not to miss. It doesn't take even 15 seconds but you must make a habit of doing it lest you easily miss something early. Thereafter, Dr. Anjali Gokarna talked about clubbing of nails. She did elaborately talk about the different stages of clubbing, different theoretical reasons for clubbing. But to me what is more important is how to pick up early clubbing. And early clubbing is picked up by vision, yes, you start suspecting whether there is a clubbing. But if you oppose the nails of say two index fingers or a two middle fingers, you will see a diamond shaped window between when you oppose the nails of two similar fingers. If this diamond shaped window is obliterated, you know it's likely to be an early clubbing. This happens because the initially the nail becomes soft and thereafter starts becoming convex. Then there is of course the swelling at the base of the nail at the junction of the nail bed and the cuticle and all those things we know very well. She also mentioned that an obvious unmistakable clubbing is often seen in a chronic respiratory problems after often a septic problems as well as subacute bacterial endocarditis 
And of course, if it is accompanied by cyanosis, then that clubbing is almost always cardiac, cyanotic heart disease. But don't miss out an early clubbing. And clubbing doesn't mean that it's either cardiac or respiratory, but it could be an intestinal disorder or a liver disorder. And this is because the pathogenesis of clubbing is not yet clear. We know that it could be set up by hypoxia, but it could be finally the vasodilation at the base of the nail bed. And of course, there are many other theories like increased growth factor or a finding megakaryocytes in the peripheral smear. Normally, megakaryocytes are filtered by the pulmonary vascular bed and are not seen in the periphery. We will not worry about those theories, but what's important is not to miss early clubbing. And do look at the nails with that kind of a observation. And finally, Dr. Palni Raman talked about cyanosis. Well, it's important to pick up early cyanosis and just a bluish tinge. He obviously made a clear difference between central and peripheral cyanosis. And he also said that uh, mostly a comfortable child with cyanosis and clubbing is almost always a cyanotic heart disease. Whereas in a respiratory condition, the cyanosis is a late sign of a respiratory failure. But what is more important not to miss is the hematological condition which present with cyanosis and they are methemoglobinemia and also to some extent polycythemia. Friends, methemoglobinemia could be asymptomatic, especially if the level of methemoglobin is only about 8 or 10 percent. And it's only when it crosses 20, 30 percent that you get symptoms of breathlessness on exertion, etc. But the point he made was don't miss out on hematological causes of cyanosis. Friends, then you have seen how important are these subtle, simple, common physical findings which we often ignore to note and when we note, we often ignore to think about its interpretation. Please take a note of it. Our next series is going to talk about some swellings that commonly present to us and Dr. Sridhar Ganpati is going to discuss about a lymphadenopathy. I hope you continue to be with us and I hope you are enjoying our YouTube channel. Please tell all your friends to see the channel and even to register it. We will be very happy to do our job. Thank you.